Right, there she blows. Thank you very much for attending again this LCG webinar. We're live covering the NFP, so we're obviously looking at September's numbers. We're in October now, it's the, the first Friday of the month. Um, it's that time again of the month for non-farm payrolls, so expecting some fireworks in markets. Um, you know, NFP moves in and out of importance. We'll talk a bit more about that in a minute, but um, generally good for a few pips in the Forex market, a few points on the, uh, the Dow. We'll see, see whether we can see a, um, a seventh consecutive higher close in the S&P 500 if we, uh, if we get the, the numbers we want to see. Um, that, that would be a, a new record um, since uh, in the last 10 years since the financial crisis that we've seen seven straight days in a row with the S&P 500. And obviously we're going to be tracking, we're going to be tracking the dollar and we're going to be tracking gold. They're the main markets I like to look at. Obviously I can cover any other markets you guys had in mind, but I think they're, they're always good movers when it comes to NFP. Now I'm hoping you've had a good look at the old risk warning on the screen by this point. I'm going to move onwards. Right, so first things first, what are we expecting here? I pulled this just straight from the, the LCG uh, economics calendar page, obviously. Um, obviously, the big one right about here, non-farm payrolls, uh, we're looking at 90,000. A pretty meager number based on um, you know, what we've been expecting and uh, what we've seen in, in the last few years. You know, the, I would say the median I don't have the exact figure to be honest. It's been about 200,000 and that's been a benchmark as to what a good number's been. Last month was a bit soft, 156,000. This month, 90,000. So what, why so so bad? Well, something I'm just wondering if the case is here um, is that I feel like maybe ec economists have maybe overblown how much of an impact those hurricanes had on job creation in the US. Um, obviously, it was a lot of trouble for the the states involved. They, you know, it was basically a shutdown, um, in, you know, in Florida and in Texas. But um, it only really lasted a few days, and I just wonder if that's really affected job growth as heavily as suspected here. Um, it's a very downbeat number, uh, and so just generally, when you have downbeat numbers, uh, there's an increased chance of a positive surprise. Now. I'll be quite frank with you, I mean, I think you all know this anyway, but picking the actual number, it's pretty much like throwing a, a dart on the dartboard. You know, economists can't even do it. One thing that this table doesn't show is that there's quite a massive variation in predictions for this number. And again, again, I think the hurricanes play into this. Um, is uh, so, so, some, uh, some of the banks are actually predicting negative numbers. Now, I think if it is a negative number, that actually might be the one scenario where the Fed doesn't hike rates in December. Uh, and so that would be an interesting one. I think that would cause some quite big moves in the dollar to the downside. Probably quite, be quite negative for the stock market as well, briefly, probably. Um, I guess that's probably not going to happen. I suspect a move to the top side, um, which naturally you would suspect to be dollar positive. We're in a, we're, we're in a pretty good dollar positive trend at the moment. Um, the dollar index just hit seven, uh, seven week highs in, uh, in the lead up to this, just in, in Asian trading today. Other numbers to consider, obviously got the, um, the average hourly earnings. Uh, we tend to look at the, um, uh, the, uh, the month over month figures rather than the annual figures. Obviously, the annual figures give you a bit of broader picture, but it's the month to month figures that generally move the market. So we're, picking, we're expecting a pickup in average, earn, average earnings growth. And I would go along with that, um, not because I've done some detailed eco econometric analysis, but there's an interesting trend I'll show you on the next page. Um, I think, or next, but maybe the one after next. Um, and then we have uh, the, other, the other number to pay attention to, of course, is just the unemployment rate, which I believe, if I remember right, had a little downward surprise month where it was supposed to be 4.5, actually turned out to be 4.4. So let's move on from here. Oh, one last thing I wanted to mention about this particular page is notice how, <laughs> look at these old guys here, Fed's William Dudley speech, member Kaplan speech, Fed's Bullard speech. These guys, Pretty much their job, and I didn't even mention Rosengren, we've got four Fed, Fed speakers after the non-farm payrolls result. 
Um, coincidence, perhaps, but I suspect uh, at least a few, uh, at least one of them is going to, if there is a bad number, step in and say, "Oh, it's just a, you know, it's just a one-off." Um, or even you know, if the numbers are good, you know, try and maybe even cool expectations and just say, "Well, you know, there's still problems with uh, low inflation." These guys are going to try and coax whatever number has more into a kind of medium, non-volatile range. So. Watch out for the initial reaction. Obviously, that's where the fireworks are. But also, watch what you watch what these guys say to try and send the market perhaps back in the other direction again later in the day. Moving on again. So um, this is just what you know where where we're at. Notice here's the little downturn. I think you can see my pointer on the screen where we you know we were we had a pretty rough start to the year um, and then we had. Um, you know, we've kind of downturned a bit. You know, you can see the trend generally, I would say, is kind of down um, in terms of the, the actual um, print here that we're regularly seeing. Um, really, we're due a big bounce up to 300, and then we wouldn't really call the trend necessarily down in terms of job creation anymore. But um, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. You know, it looks like it's going to head down to the bottom of this range. Um, and so... You know, uh, it's 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 not a big problem because we're heading. You know, we've got 4.4 percent unemployment, so it's pretty much close to full employment. So, it's how many jobs can you add when everyone's already employed? That that's the logic. Obviously, it's not quite the case, but um, along those lines, this is what I was referring to in terms of those average earnings numbers. Notice, what does this remind you of? Um, you know, those who like technical analysis, so this chart just looks like an oscillator, right? It pretty much goes between zero and 0.4. And you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar, almost, based on previous readings, that whenever you get a reading down at zero on these average early earnings, um, it bounces back the following month. So we had a point one last month, and I think it stands to reason what the economists are predicting here is that it just bounces back up to 0.3%. So that, that would be a positive indication for the dollar and um, the, the Fed are worried about wage growth I think it's kind of um, you know it's not strong enough to really push up inflation over the longer term and it's one of the reason why uh, the market's kind of undershooting the Fed in terms of its long-term um, inflation outlook so just having a look at some of the uh, <clears throat> the older scenarios how are we doing for time I better actually uh, Make sure I don't miss the main event here. Oh, okay, we've got six minutes. All right, six minutes and countdown. Um, <clears throat> wanted to have a look at a few past reactions just to get a little flavour for for how NFP has been recently. And you know, this is just this is just what I do in my trading anyway. Um, I just think this is the absolute most important possible thing you can do when it comes to trading is just go back and look at previous candlesticks and just look at well. You know, whether you're looking at previous economic events and how the market moved, or maybe you're just looking at how, you know, what, what, how did candlesticks look? How did uh, the trend look? How did indicators look when we saw some big turning points and really nice entries? Um, how could I have participated in this nice move in the market and earn myself a bunch of profit? Um, you know, you can really only do that by going back and looking at previous price charts. That said, <laughs> this is probably one of the least informative examples of doing so, um, because the uh, the NFP can really just fly the market around, um, irrespective of the current state of affairs. So you can see back in September, this is a 15-minute chart, as it says there. We were kind of heading down into a bit of a downtrend on the short term in the, the days leading up to the, the, the NFP report. And then, so we had quite a sharp little downturn. We kind of paused around this sort of... Um, uh, uh, 110 mark really, but a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit lower. So 109.90, we kind of bottomed out down here, and we started basing. We basically went sideways a little bit, kind of pulled off a bit of a triangle pattern, in fact, and then we just slid straight out of that triangle pattern and continued this downtrend. So anyone who had missed out on this trend that was selling on the bounces hoping the trend continues, well actually NFP provided a nice little opportunity to do so, but you had to be pretty quick off the mark because it was only down at these lower prices for a little while um, uh, before it pretty much ended the day even, even just a few uh, hours, not even like an hour or so later, it actually gone back in the complete opposite direction. So, you know, if you are placing some trades ahead of these numbers, um, be aware that, um, 
you know, you want to hold on long enough to grab enough points to make the risk worthwhile, because if it flies in the other direction, you don't want to see, you know, you obviously get, you stand to lose more pips, but it's a thin line between holding on too long and, um, yeah, as I said, holding on too long and the market just completely reverses on you. <clears throat> this is a 15-minute chart, and I feel like uh, based on the close of the 15-minute candle, you've got a pretty good handle on whether the market can extend for another 15 minutes. Now, you can be a bit more conservative than that and use a five-minute chart, but I would say that, the say on this candle, there's a big big wick at the bottom here, and then it reverses up, because um, it basically closes that 15, first 15-minute 15 candle almost halfway back up. Again, that's a bit of a reversal. That's a sign that there's buyers coming in. It, you can see the same kind of formation on a five-minute candle, but it won't be as reliable. You could still tank again and take out new lows, um, even if you saw that kind of reversal on a five minute. Now let's have a look at uh, August. Um, now here's a slightly different scenario where it wasn't a really strong downtrend coming into this, but the market was heading lower. Series of obviously lower lows, lower highs, downtrend. Bases again, you know, was, was the same thing we're seeing in the current market conditions. Bases out ahead of the NFP report, ex low volatility preceding high volatility. And then in, in this occasion, it's, almost, it's actually another um, uh, almost kind of triangle pattern here, but it's certainly a downward sloping trend line through these highs. Um, and we, we steady out to make you know, these kind of even highs around 110 again, and then we just shoot out to the top side. And notice we close this first 15 minute candlestick. We didn't close in the bottom half of the candle, but there was a fair amount of wick on there. But we actually managed to push up again in the next candle. And so that next 15-minute candle told us actually there might be a bit more legs on this market. It drifted down a bit, but by the end of the day, it was actually quite a fair bit higher um, than it started the day. So obviously, when we had that dollar strong result, um, a bit more conviction behind it. <coughs> How have we got to? Oh, let's let's jump over to the numbers. We're almost um, we're almost ready to have a look at those here. So I'm hoping this is going to work out. Um, I'm hoping I've got my news feed up here to show us um, what the exact numbers are going to be, and then we'll jump back over um, to uh, the charting platform <coughs> in, a, in order to see how the markets are moving. So um, hope you guys uh, hope you guys are ready for this. Uh, this is when the market's about to move. We're about one minute away here. At the moment, all we've, I'm hoping this news feed comes up, Trumps. Dow Jones news feed, come on. You know it makes sense. If I don't see anything in a few split seconds. Oh, there we go. All right, so we've got the info. Uh, oh, we've got unemployment rate down to 4.2%. Uh, Non-fund penalties minus 33. It has come out minus. That is massive. Okay, that that's significant. Um, Anything else significant? Down, July revised down to 138. Um, the let's have a look. Average hours zero. Um, average hourly earnings plus 4.5. That's oh, that's interesting. So the average hourly earnings pushed right up to 0.4. That's a positive dollar threat. But I think that headline number will probably be the bigger one. Let's have a quick look back at the markets. Okay, where are we? So we're seeing a dollar positive reaction here. That's interesting. So the, we're pushing up here on the dollar yen, um, we're dropping down on euro, we're dropping in gold, uh, and we're actually dropping in Wall Street too, we're dropping on the, on the Dow Jones. So let's flip back, if you don't mind guys, I'm sure you've got the charts up yourselves anyway, so let's jump back to the, the figures themselves and see if there's anything more to be made from this. <coughs> so. That's really interesting. So the, the, the headline number, minus 33K, um, but consensus 80 according to this, we had 90. Um, unemployment rate dropped, obviously, and the, uh, and the average hourly earnings are up at 0.4 instead of 0.3. So I think it's just, I think the market's actually looking here at um, the, at the average, earning, average hourly earnings and the unemployment rate and that's trumping the the negative job growth in um, uh, maybe just uh, you know as we well, I obviously got this completely wrong. I thought that maybe the economists were underestimating the effect of uh, 
I thought they were overestimating the effect of the hurricane. Um, you know, if we are going to blame this on a one-off hurricane effect, um, they were obviously economists have drastically underestimated it. Um, some of those economists who I was mentioning had negative forecasts. They they actually were spot on. <clears throat> so a bit negative on the August payrolls were down uh, uh, downgraded a little bit. Um, but oh, but that's interesting. The BLS saying no apparent hurricane effect on the unemployment rate, um, but they are saying it did reduce non-farm employment in September. So there you go. I mean, that's what we were talking about, obviously. That was the key, wasn't it? Um, the, the hurricanes. But um, yeah, really, um, the, mark, the dollar moving higher. Let's jump back to it again. Yeah, dollar sustaining its gains here. Basically, with the logic, I think, <clears throat> and look at Wall Street, classic, little dip, and everyone's just bought the dip, and it's going up high again. <clears throat> so that's what I said, yeah, a little... Um, you know, when I said, talked about the, any negative reaction in, in Wall Street, um, in the in the Dow, etc., you can expect it to be brief because it's such a bullish market right now. Uh, so, how many pips are we looking at here on dollar yen? We're um, it's minimal, you know, it because it's because because it, it's a bit of a mixed report. It's 96 up to 26. We're not talking about 30 pips or so. Um, 30 pips or so down on the downside in in euro dollar. Gold, uh, gold's a soft market, but it's down. It, it spikes higher initially. Interestingly, um, sometimes gold fades off the wrong way before the before the release, and we're down about three dollars in gold. <clears throat> so it's you know basically, I think the market opinion here is that it was just a one-off. It's because of the hurricane, and actually earnings growth are picking up, and the unemployment rate has dropped which supposedly wasn't affected by the hurricane. So who knows, BLS saying that job creation was affected, but the unemployment wasn't. So, you know, I guess they're the, uh, they're the labor market economists. They know best, but, um, you know, the, the way the market's reading it is, is positive here. And, uh, you know, the, the, just, to, just to explain the Wall Street reaction, I mean, traditionally, I think maybe the Wall Street reaction is like more reacting to the head, headline numbers, and obviously at some point in time, stocks would head lower over fear of future rate hikes, but we've known rate hikes are coming for a while now, and Wall Street still be heading higher, so, um, you know, it's, uh, as I said, fl fleeting negative reaction in Wall Street. Then again, uh, I did mention that we've had six straight days um, at record highs in the S&P 500, pretty down over stretch to the top side. Um, and uh, so we're aiming for the seventh. Maybe this, maybe you can just spin this number to say it's not quite reasonable enough for the seventh. <clears throat> I certainly wouldn't be surprised if we again close the day higher on Wall Street, just because it's such a bullish trend. I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't want to go against it. <clears throat> so that's it, guys. Um, yeah, I mean that's pretty. That's, I think that's that's the non-farm payroll figures uh, for today. Um, I hope that was useful to everyone. Um, you know, I hope that was a bit of fun. I hope people made some pips. <clears throat> um, it wasn't the most volatile, to be honest. You know, 30 odd pips in currency markets. That's what you get when the the um, you know the numbers kind of diverge like that. The, obviously, the good unemployment, the good average earnings, not so good um, job growth. Um, but uh, you know, upshot, don't think this changes a December rate hike. I still think it happens. Um, because of that average earnings growth, because of the unemployment rate. I think those, t I, originally I said that the negative number could stop them. Um, I think you can see from this market reaction, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that actually the market's taken this as okay, and I think we're all, we're all good still for that December rate hike. But let's see what those Fed members, see what those Fed policy members say about it later. Thank you very much for attending, everyone. Really appreciate it, and um, good luck with trading. So it's going to be Jasper signing out. Thank you all.